Okay, so the idea of this video is to prove that the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x equals 1. And I have this funky figure drawn with three different colored shapes, and let me just show you where those shapes came from. So I just took this triangle here, and I, I pulled it out and, and drew it separately. And then I took this sector of the circle here, and I pulled it out and drew it separately. And then I took this larger triangle and pulled it out and drew it separately just so that we can see what we're really talking about. Sometimes it gets difficult when, when, you, um, when you try and talk about three different shapes that are kind of part of each other. Okay, so now that we have that, I wanna, what I'm going to try and do is draw a relationship between these three shapes. And somebody much more clever than I um, came up with this relationship and they came up with, with this as a proof for the sine of the limit as x approaches 0 of the sine of x over x equals 1. Okay, so let's take a look here. We know that this triangle, the, f the first triangle that we're looking at, this one here, is the smallest of all the shapes. Because if you take that triangle and you add a little bit to it, well then that obviously it makes it bigger. And if you take that shape, the, the sector of the circle, and you add a little bit to that, well then that obviously makes that bigger. So we can say that, at least in terms of area, that this triangle's area, the area of this triangle, is either less than or equal to, and you'll, it's less than, but we'll see why we put that equal to in later, is either less than or equal to the area of this, is either less than or equal to the area of this. So now we've, we've drawn some sort of relationship, we've, we've created an inequality. And now let's try and figure out their areas. Okay, so let's let's go to the the first the uh, first triangle here. The area of this triangle is going to be one half base times height. Well, what's the base? I didn't tell you this, but this is the unit circle. Usually, you can assume if I've drawn a circle, it's the unit circle, unless I say otherwise. Okay, so this 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 is the radius. It's one. Of course, this is the radius 2, that's also 1. But what is the height? The height of this thing is going to be dependent on the sine function. right? If this is the angle x, then the sine of x is equal to the height of this triangle here. OK, so the height of that triangle is going to be sine of x. That means this area is 1 half, because it's a triangle, 1 half the base, which we just said was 1, times the height, which we said was sine x. OK. And that is going to be less than or equal to these areas. What's the area of the sector of a circle? Well, I don't know if you've learned this or not, but the sector of a circle has an area of, of the angle. So our angle is x. Let's not forget that. This angle is x here. The angle times the radius squared divided by 2. And our radius is just 1. So radius squared, that's just going to be 1. So this is really going to be, let, let, me, let me redo that really quickly. This is just going to be the angle x times 1 squared, which is just 1 over 2, Okay, which is less than or equal to the area of this triangle. And this requires a little bit of, of trigonometric, trigonometric, trigon, no, trigonometric knowledge, holy cow, <laughs> trigonometric knowledge of the geometry of some of the trig functions. And it turns out that this length here is actually tangent theta, or tangent of x, because we're using x as our angle. Now, why do we care about that? Because that is the height of this larger triangle. And it shares a base with the, the smaller triangle. The base is 1, the height is tangent x. So we can write its area as, as the 1 half, the base, which is 1, times the height, which is tangent x. OK, and now let me just clean this stuff up by, by getting rid of multiplying by 1 and all that stuff. So this is going to be the sine, x, oh, sine of x over 2 is less than or equal to x over 2 is less than or equal to tangent x over 2. Okay, so let's call this let's call this step one, step two. Now step three, let's multiply by two and get rid of all all those twos. So 
this will just become sine x is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to tan x. And now let's let's do, divide everything by sine x. Let's divide everything by sine x. So step four, we're gonna div we're gonna divide everything by sine x, and this will be one is less than or equal to sine x. Oops, sorry. X over sine x is less than or equal to. Well, this is sine over cos. So if you divide by sine, you're just gonna the sines are gonna divide to one, and you'll get one over cos x. Okay, so let me pull step five over here. We could at this point take a limit, but we're not going to yet. And I, I, and you probably are saying, take a limit. What do you mean? Let me do something first. Let's let's take the reciprocal of of this inequality. And if you take a reciprocal of an inequality, you have to flip the signs. So we're going to get one is greater than or equal to sine x over x. And, and maybe now you see why we took that reciprocal, because we're left with a sine x over x, which is the limit we're trying to find, is greater than or equal to one, oh, sorry, this is just going to become cos x. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to take that, and we want to take a limit on all these inequalities. So the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 is greater than the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x greater than or equal to is greater than or equal to the limit as x approaches 0 of cos x. Okay, and now we're, we're basically we're at the end of the problem. So what, what's going to happen is once we can take these limits all but one. The limit as x approaches 0 of 1, well 1 is just a constant so it's, it stays 1 which is greater than or equal to the limit we're, which we're trying to find which is greater than or equal to well the limit as x approaches 0 of cos we could just take our 0 and plug it in for cos and the cos of 0 is 1. So now hopefully you can see just intuitively if 1 is greater than or equal to a number which is greater than or equal to 1 what does the number have to be in there? Just think about it. It has to be 1, right? If it was 2, it would be greater than this one, but it wouldn't be less than that one. In other words, you're, you're, you're squeezed in. There's only one value that makes any sense, and it's 1. And that actually comes from the squeeze theorem. But, but if you can see, we took the limit as x uh, approaches 0 of sine x over x, and we find out it has to be 1. And let me show you the squeeze theorem really quick. Basically what it says, if, if you have three functions, oops, if you have three functions, one function is always, oops, let me, let me make this function look like what we're talking about. One function is always in between the other two. So you have a function that's always in between these, other, these two functions, the one above it and the one below it. Well, if those two functions squeeze into a point, so that's where the name comes from, if those two functions squeeze into a certain point, how about as x approaches 0, they squeeze into 1. So um, this point here, as x approaches 0, those squeeze into 1. If the, the function in the middle is always in the middle, and those squeeze to a single point, well, then that mu the function in the middle must also be squeezed to that point. And that's why they call it the squeeze theorem. And hopefully you, you understand what that means. So what we had was this, these limits, for, or, or, or we saw what happened as those two functions squeezed in on that limit. And so the, the, the function in the middle must squeeze to that point. Because we have our inequality. We are saying this function is always in between these other two. Okay, so that, that's a proof that the, the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x equals 1. And my guess, I don't know the history of, of this proof, but my guess is that somebody thought of this because they needed to take the derivative of the sine function. If you remember taking the derivative of the sine function, we had to make use of this. If we didn't know that limit, we wouldn't have been able to take its derivative. Okay, see you in the next video.